Allah said in the Quran, O who you believe, all of you must repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the Muslims, due to their limited knowledge of an Islam, they may assume that they can delay the tawbah until they reach certain age, until they get married, until they perform their hajj, and they thought that they can do whatever they want to do because Allah will wait for them and Malak al Maut will wait for them. But they don't realize that Malak al Maut does not discriminate. Malak al Maut does not know whether you're young or old. It does not care whether you're rich or poor, whether you're male or female, whether you're healthy or ill. Malak al Maut has a list of names. And based on that list, Malak al Maut will take the souls of the people. Some of the stories from Bani Israel. Just to support what we're saying, not to take it as the core material of our deen. But they said that Malak al Maut, he looks at the person's face five times a day. And he sees this person that is planning for his future, he's planning for his wedding. He's planning for his business. He's planning for his trips. He's planning for the future of his children. But Malak al Maud is saying, what a poor soul. He does not know that his time is coming soon. He doesn't know, but he thinks he has so much time. In a similar narration, we all know the story of Malik Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam. That in the presence of the Nabi, his advisors were sitting next to him, one of his advisors. He felt uncomfortable and he left. And he came back later on and Sulaiman said alayhi salam to him, it is, not, it is not your nature to act like that and behave as such and leave as such. He said, Ayyuha Nabi. The man who was sitting next to you was staring at me, looking at me in a strange way. He made me very uncomfortable, so I left. Who was he? Sulaiman said, that was the angel of death. The wazir or the advisor said, Subhanallah, me and Malak al maut on the same land, we cannot be. So please order the wind to carry me to a far land from the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sulaiman in a long story to make sure, he ordered the wind to carry this man to the land of India. And subhanallah, shortly after that, Malak al maut once again came to Sulaiman. And when he came to him, Sulaiman said to the Malak al maut you made my advice is very uncomfortable. What were you staring at him like this? He said, I was shocked about his presence here. Allah had ordered, had ordered me to take his soul in the land of India. So I followed the orders of Allah and I went to India saying, Subhanallah, how can I take the soul of this man who was all the way in Palestine? And all of a sudden, the wind brought him to me on due time, so I took his soul. So no matter what we try to do, and this is again, min al istinas, not from Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim. So again, we have no knowledge when Malak al maut would come and would ask your soul to be delivered and send it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we say, Inna lillahi in the Quran wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Indeed, we belong to Allah and into Allah we all shall return.